Welcome to The Point of View. This is your favorite current affair show on television here on The Point of View. We pick the right topics, we get the right guests, ask them relevant questions on issues that matter to you. We're live tonight on City TV. And after three very troubling angles to Ghana's economy, we ask the question, is Ghana broke or not? So Bloomberg penned a story a few days ago titled, Ghana's debt dips deeper into distress as investors quit. Then the World Bank warned a number of African countries of the difficulty in financing their external debt or accessing external financing for their economies. Then Fitch, one of three global rating agencies, gave that Ghana a downgrade, which is the lowest we've had since records started, at least since 1992. So what do these things mean for Ghana's economy? I'll be talking to two of my best panelists for the year 2021. They are here in the studio to help me appreciate the issues. When we come back, I'll tell you more. Stay with us. Welcome once again to Malaria 360. Our attention is on how to stay away from malaria when pregnant. Number one, as soon as you realize you're pregnant, visit an antenatal care clinic early and regularly. Number two, adopt the habit of sleeping under an insecticide treated net. Number three, eat sufficient meals full of the right nutrients. Number four, sulfur doxin pyrimethamine. SP is safe for both the pregnant woman and the unborn child. Ensure that you take all your doses of SP as the advice of your healthcare worker for a malaria-free pregnancy. If you have to visit the health facility, adhere to all the COVID-19 safety protocols in place. COVID-19 is real and so is malaria. Zero malaria starts with me and you. Welcome back. So tonight on A Point of View, try and understand what some key institutions are saying about Ghana's economy, our debt position, our ability to pay, and we'll also understand what this means for our credit worthiness and possibly our finance. And my guest in studio, Toma Emi here, he's a business analyst but a journalist, right, with multiple platforms. Toma, great to have you. Good evening. It's always a pleasure to be here, Bernard. I also have the man who is the second in command at Dalex. That's what I call him. It's called Joe Jackson. Always in his Igbo hat. Good to see you, Joe. Good to see you. Good to be here. It's funny. He's the Nigerian, but you are wearing a Nigerian dressing. You know. It's amazing. <laughs> so let me make a quick intro before I come to you guys. So first issue, Bloomberg. Government has responded to Bloomberg, by the way. So I read government's response. But the, the Bloomberg story is not new. They wrote one in November. They did one in December. So this is the latest installment in those stories. The story says, Ghana's debt dips deeper into distress as investors quit. Now, I won't read the full story, but basically saying that our sovereign debt spreads above 1,000 points, higher since April 2020. Our dollar bonds have the worst start to the 2022 among emerging markets. There's a chart they show. We are in very bad company. Lebanon, Tunisia, Ethiopia, which is at war, Sri Lanka, Tajikistan. And of all those, our bond returns perform the worst. Now, we also have the highest spreads. Now, when they talk of a spread, they're basically talking about what people lend to the best people and how much this. So, basically, the, the, the difference between uh, what investors would give to people they consider to be blue chip borrowers and us. And it appears that compared to East African peers and indeed to global peers, international investors prefer to lend to us at a higher rate. That's what they mean by the spreads. So basically, that's what Bloomberg is saying. The story is pretty long. I'll read the finance ministry's response also briefly to you later on. But they're basically saying that the extra premium demanded on Ghana's sovereign dollar debt jumped to an average of 1,105 basis points from 683 in September. Now, our foreign debt is $27 billion. And it says we had the worst start to the year among emerging markets, extending 
our 14 percent loss according to the bloomberg index now what is happening according to bloomberg investors are questioning whether ghana which is west africa's second largest economy can sustain its debt levels if the rise in borrowing costs shuts us out of international markets now according to the bloomberg story our debt to gdp is now 78.4 initially they are written 81 government contends with that some say six of one half a dozen of the other be that as it may there's concern over whether the ghana can service its debts so that's the first story the second story is the world bank the world bank was not specific on ghana but they mentioned a group of countries nigeria cote d'ivoire ghana and they call them low income or developing african countries now the story i will read is from the bnft of today january the 17th it says world bank warns of difficulty in accessing external financing and it says the country will have a tough time borrowing from the international market this year given its high debt portfolio a warning the world bank has sounded to all sub-saharan african countries with debt sustainability issues ghana has long been classified by the world bank and imf as among the countries at high risk of debt distress the country's public debt as of september 2021 stood at 341.8 billion cities, 77.8% GDP. Of this amount, external component is given 37%. Meanwhile, the 2022 budget shows that government plans to borrow $750 million with the option of further increasing by another $750 million in all. That could be another $1.5 billion. Basically saying that total foreign financing, exceptional financing, which is things like IMF, special drawing rights, allocation, will amount to nine billion cities now the world bank is of the view that all sub-saharan african countries facing their sustainability challenges which includes ghana will find it tough this is the emphasis raising the needed finances from external sources implying that ghana's plan to raise up to 1.5 billion dollars from the international markets is in danger so first we are being charged a premium for borrowing from the international markets then the world bank is saying that countries like ghana could face a difficulty in accessing financing from external sources then almost like the last straw that broke the camel's back is fitch so there are three rating agencies standards and Poor's, moody's and fitch now this story is making rounds everywhere the fitch story says uh ghana if i let me the graphic version but the, the, this is the, the fitch story it says an international ratings agency has downgraded the country's long-term default rating to be negative over concerns that the country faced increased risk in servicing its debts in the medium to long term. The agency cut the country's long-term foreign currency issuer default rating to be negative from B with negative outlook last week. It blamed the development on the country's loss of access to the international capital markets in the second half of last year, which meant that it would be unable to borrow from the international financial markets this year. Now, Ghana's effective loss of market access to international bond market increases risk to its ability to meet medium and long-term financing needs, it said. However, in a statement, the Fitch said the country would be able to meet its external debt service without relying on new borrowings in the international market. And then they give some numbers. Okay. Let me show you a couple of quick charts to make this here. So, of the three rating agencies, traditionally, Fitch gives us the best ratings, Okay. Let me show you the rates, the, 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 the scale of rating first. So there's Standards and Poor's, Fitch and Moody's. And basically, you are either investment grade or speculative grade. From the best being high grade credit, very high grade, good credit, speculative grade, and then you come to things like very speculative and then substantial risk in default. So you notice that the green at the top is the best rating, then it comes down. The latest rating puts Ghana one step ahead the red. So red is basically you have triple C plus, triple C, triple C minus, double C, C, and then D. You are entering junk status. So Ghana is essentially one step from entering a place where nobody can lend to you. All right. Now, why is this significant? Let's show you how Fitch has been rating us since 2003. Since 2003. And this is by Simon's work, I, I, I would need to say. He, he put this together. So December 2003, we had a B positive. So this is Kufuor, Hippic time. May, March 2005. So I'm starting from the bottom and work, working my way upwards. So that was March 2005, 
B plus positive. February 2006, school for second term, B plus positive as well. February 2008, final year of Q4, B plus stable, right? March 2009, first year of Mills, B plus negative. So it's still B plus, but it's negative. So there, there's the rating and the outlook. The rating talks about essentially where you are. The outlook talks about what will happen, okay? Look at March, September 2010. This is still Mills, B plus stable, not too bad. February 2013. B plus negative. So this is Mahama. First Mahama. B plus negative. Then you have October 2013. Second Mahama rating. B stable. So it's getting better. But it's B. So the rating is lower. But the outlook is better than negative. Right? March 2014. This is heat of Doomsaw crisis. B negative. Setepe. Scrambling. Looking for help everywhere. Sinking fund and things. March 2014. Another B still negative. But then by Nana Kufalo's first time, of course, this is historical now, May 2017, B stable. So it's much better than what he took over from Mahama. Then you go to January 2021, we jump now. So the, a year ago around this time, is B negative. Now, what is making this troubling is that this is the first time we've gotten a B negative, B minus. So go to the top, top. Fitch is now giving us a B minus and it's a negative. So it's a double whammy. From Kufu all the way, we've never had a B minus. We've had negatives before, but never had a B minus. So this is what's going on. I could show you more charts. But let me read the finance ministry's response. Then I'll come to my guest. Finance ministry responded only to Bloomberg. They didn't respond to Fitch. I think Fitch came today. And the, the World Bank wasn't specific to them, so they don't really need to respond. Finance ministry responds to Bloomberg. Dated Thursday, okay, it actually came today. On Thursday, 13 January, the attention of the Ministry of Finance was drawn to a widely circulated Bloomberg article caption, Ghana's debt moves into distress as investors lose patience. There are some serious factual errors in the article, which may give investors some cause for concern, if not corrected. For example, Bloomberg stated 81.5% as end-of-year debt-to-GDP ratio. This is incorrect. Our provisional nominal debt-to-GDP as of November 2021 was 784 which is the latest data available. December revenue collections are seasonally the largest for any year. It's unlikely that our financial requirements in December will result in us exceeding 80% debt-to-GDP ratio by December 2021. The article gave the wrong historical debt-to-GDP figures. It's essential to, we make the correction that Canada's debt-to-GDP uh, a decade ago was 39.67 and 47.80 for 2011 and 2012 respectively, and not 31.4, as stated in the article. Again, it's important to note that for the period prior to the COVID pandemic, Ghana experienced an average debt-to-GDP ratio 56.4% from 2015 to 2019. In 2020, our GDP grew by 0.4% because of the impact of COVID pandemic on the recovery, financing of the additional COVID-related expenditure in addition to raised revenue targets due to the impact of pandemic led to increase in debt-to-GDP from 62.4% to 76.1. Now, the current debt to GDP of 78.4 as of end November indicates rather a reduction in the rate of debt accumulation. So government keeps talking about rate of debt accumulation. Now, this attests to an improvement in our debt and liability management contrary to what the Article 6 suggests. Furthermore, the positive primary balance target for 2022, all the key fiscal anchors in 2022, Ghana should see improvement in stability reduction in their debt to GDP ratio through the medium term. Then they go on to say that they now deal with the issue of investors. So they dealt with Bloomberg. Now they are saying it's most unfortunate to know that foreign investors and market participants are on edge. So they are admitting that there's anxiety following the impasse in Parliament in relation to the passage of E-Levy. The market seems to now be pricing into our bonds the perceived risks of having a slim majority in parliament and the consequences thereof the market also seems to be concerned that this might impact Ghana's ability to successfully pass and implement some of its major revenue policies as presented in the 2022 budget the ministry would like to state that a healthy debate in a vibrant parliament is a critical part of Ghana's democracy credentials and by no means should be deemed to be a fiscal risk this is an interesting point the fact that there's rigorous debate and the opposition can sabotage government does not necessarily mean that it's bad that's what they're saying it's part of our democratic credentials. So we should have positive for that, not negative. 
government is confident that when parliament resumes sitting this month, E levy, which has already been discussed and approved by the finance committee, will be passed. So they are still benching their hopes on E levy. The ministry also wishes to state that government is on track to meet its non oil tax revenue targets for December for 2021. The 2022 non oil tax revenue of 80.3 billion moves us to a tax GDP of 16%, which is still below a medium average of 18. We are, however, confident that we can meet the 2022 revenue target and that the E levy will help us accomplish this. So E levy are an echo. The ministry will continue to monitor and adjust expenditures accordingly. They say a few other things. But basically, they've tried to disagree also with the way the international market is reading what's going on here. So they disagree with Bloomberg. They disagree with, obviously disagree with Fitch, based on what I've just read. Okay, then they're going to say, let's go to the Eurobonds thing. Ghana does not face any imminent external imbalances or reserve shortfall. The reserve at over five times import cover is well above our internal target of four months and is better than the average over the previous two decades. Financing foreign financing of the 22 budget of 1.5 billion, the 750 times two, no, is also bolstered by a balance of SDR approximately 700 million, special drawing rights. The balance can be financed through the use of alternative instruments, including long term loans, bilateral and multinational loans, facilities, and a tap in on our domestic dollar bond, among others. Then they go on to say, like all emerging market countries with foreign investor participation and domestic debt, Ghana is susceptible to a tighter U.S. monetary policy stance. However, Ghana's healthy reserves of over five months of import cover amid reduced levels of investor participation and domestic market. Then let's go to the cracks of the, the argument. Whereas we acknowledge that the current trading levels of Euro bonds have widened, we do not believe that it is warranted. So it's agree with the way the market is treating them or treating us. <laughs> We do not believe that it is warranted, nor do we believe that it reflects the strong underlying fundamentals of the Ghanaian economy and our rapid robust rebound post-COVID as evidenced by the healthy GDP growth of 6.6 .6 for third quarter alone and an average of 5.2 for first quarter of 2021. While the end-year growth target for 2021 has been revised to 4.4, high-frequency indicators suggest a continued strong momentum in economic activity. Conclusion. Despite the global challenge that exists on the back of COVID-19 and especially in emerging markets, with risks such as financial distress and sluggish progress on vaccination as already cited by World Bank, the ministry would like to reassure all its investors that Ghana's fundamentals remain strong as attested to by our growth in Q3, the GRA exceeding its targets in 2021 and our strong reserve position. Ghana will continue to show leadership in this difficult post-COVID era to build a sustainable entrepreneurial nation while ensuring that job creation, growth and fiscal consolidation are not compromised in line with the president's vision of Ghana Beyond Aid. So that's the government's response. So World Bank, Fitch, Bloomberg, Joe Jackson, and Toma. Let me start with Toma briefly. I come to Joe. Toma, you've been following these stories. What do you make of this back and forth? Bloomberg, Fitch, World Bank, all speaking around the same time, saying essentially the same thing. Government says I disagree. Well, but the fact is this. Whether government is right or government is wrong the bottom line is this the international investment community are far more likely to listen to bloomberg fitch moody's and standard and Poor's, who are on the same page than government's ministry of finance which is on a different page i always say that you see People do not react necessarily to what is the truth. They react to what they perceive mm. is the truth. Mm. And in this case, the perception of the truth mm. by international bondholders, our creditors, is the perception created by those institutions, Bloomberg, Fitch, Moody's, and Standard and & Poor's. So, no matter what how the ministry of finance argues mm. its case mm. is going to still going to work against us mm. all right so that handles the perception then there's also the actual issue of the truth mm. now that is a more complicated issue mm -hmm. but the bottom line is this we're in a lot of trouble you notice that the ministry of finance talks about the fact that our end of year debt to GDP ratio is not um, 81. 81, it's 78.4. Mm. 
now we are talking about what the difference of 300 basis points mm. is that the difference between an economy that is sustainable and one that is not mm. i do think so mm. um there's one very important bottom line because we don't have time there's one very important bottom line i want to draw people's attention to you know the ministry of finance talked about our meeting our non-oil tax revenues mm -hmm. now this is where the big problem is the big problem is the oil revenues mm. you see we have been borrowing money since 2007 based on expected increases in oil revenues mm. we discovered our first oil in 2007 mid 2007 within three months we have started going to euro bond market mm. if now i think i've said this on this program before if you track our the way we go to euro bond market it always coincides with new oil discoveries or uh, confirmation of commerciality of a new oil field mm -hmm. i mean 2007 there was the jubilee field um then we didn't go to the market again mm -hmm. until 2013 when the um 10 cluster field mm -hmm. was confirmed as commercial mm -hmm. then the mahama government started going to the to the euro bond market every year mm -hmm. then when the sankofa janime thing is now confirmed as commercial then the the, uh, the incumbent Akufado uh, government now increases its take off the market annually from one billion a year which mama was doing to about three billion a year which we have been doing over the past couple of years the whole idea is that that extra money from oil will take care of the extra costs mm -hmm. of the monies we are borrowing mm -hmm. the snag is that for some time now that expected growth in oil revenues has stopped happening mm. when was the last time we had an oil discovery which is now which has now been backed by a plan of development i'm not even talking about a, a, a few being developed now even a, an approved plan of development that an agreement is, this is how we are going to develop the oil field to, to generate more money mm. and that is the major thing that's affecting that's worrying the foreign creditors because if you follow our road shows every time we go to the Euro market, that has been the key thing we tell them. Mm. Hey, more oil, more revenue, more ability to pay our debts. And it has stopped happening. Mm. For several years now, it has stopped happening. Which is why the ministry said government is on track to meet its non oil tax revenue target. And they don't refer to the they, they didn't make mention the, of oil. The oil, exactly. And the basis of the brewing is the oil. So there's a problem there. There you go. So far, so good. Let me take your opening thoughts, Joe. <laughs> I know you have your own data to also show, but let me just give you introductory thoughts first. No, in, in a lot of ways, right, it, it's, it's okay for the Ministry of Finance to present its, 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 its point of view mm -hmm. and to put its best foot forward. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't change anything. Mm. These are independent foreign institutions. When they present a point of view, mm. right, they mm. have analysts that, frankly, are far more sophisticated than I am. Mm. Or maybe even Tomaez or you are. Mm. Right? Those analysts will take your budget numbers, take it apart. Those, budgets, those analysts will take your reports apart, cross-references with what is happening. Mm -hmm. And they say the situation is not good. Well... They're right. Nothing is really black and white. Obviously, the bad situation might have one or two points. But think about it. In essence, this statement has agreed with the most critical parts of the analysis. Mm. It agreed that our bond yields are widening. Now, let me make a little... Exp uh, the bond uh, uh, spreads are widening. Let me make a, a little explanation here. When you, when you go and sell a bond... Mm -hmm. Give or take variations. The way it works is this. Hey, Bernard, mm. give me 100 CDs. Mm -hmm. In five years' time, I'll give you 150 CDs. Works well, right? Mm -hmm. Good. Now, with a little catch. Bernard, five years old, before five years, if you want your money, go and sell it in the market. Don't come to me. 
That's how it works. Mm -hmm. Now, when you go to the market and you say, I bought a bond from Joe Jackson two years ago. He says, you give me 150. Thomas, will you buy? Thomas says, mm, Joe, now he's broke. His um. stomach has slimmed down. So he says, give me a discount because the time you bought it, Joe was looking fat and wealthy. Now he's looking slim and I don't like the way he looks. He's broke. So instead of me, instead of Toma getting a hundred CDs, you say, Toma, I only give you 80 CDs. I'm giving really basic example. A basic example. I'll give you only 80 CDs. Then Toma says, okay, it's okay. You, the way things are going, you give me my 80 CDs and let me walk and you hold the risk. And that is how the year now goes up. Now, that is how, that's, and he says that the spread or the discount Between that you have to offer to be able to sell your bond is growing. So the 100 to 80. So if, if it was started at 100 to 95, mm -hmm. then it went to 100 to 90. Then it went to 100 to uh, 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 80. 80. So when you look at what the original yield should be, there's some gap, another line going up that is growing and growing and growing. That's the bond spread. That's the bond spread. So the bigger it is, the worse. Yes. So no matter how you look at it, the matter of the Ministry of Finance says, the fact that investors now value our bonds and, and, less than... And, and in, at, in, in a sense, all, all Bloomberg or these other agencies are saying are something that the investors have been saying for a long time because their bond didn't grow in the last week. The spread, the yields didn't grow in the last week. They've been growing over a period of time. In fact, they've been growing pre-COVID, actually. Thank yeah. you. They've been oh, pre growing pre-COVID because we've been... Our, we've been borrowing, and our debt sustainability is getting shaky. You see, and then we have to admit one thing. First, money was cheap. The mm. U.S. Treasury was essentially, rates were at the lowest we've seen in decades. Mm. Now, the U.S. Treasury, for its own issues over uh, 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 liquidity, excess liquidity, etc., is increasing yields. So now, should I give? Should I take a bond from Ghana, where now they are looking shaky and shakier, mm. or should I take some stable income from the U.S.? So some of it is also the world is 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 looking at everything, and they, and they are not those who buy our bonds. They are not sentimental. They don't really care. They are not partisan. They don't care about NDC or NPP. Mm. They just give this analysis uh, analyst and say. Make some analysis of Ghana. Will it work? Yeah, the risk is not too bad. Price the risk. Let's do it. Price the risk. No, 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 no. Now it's getting too bad. Yeah. You've got to look. These guys are not sentimental. They're not partisan. They're just telling us. And anyway, why are we so shocked? Haven't some of us been saying these same things for the last how many years? Okay. There's a question we'll ask when we come back. How dependent are we on the international market market okay. what alternatives are there for ghana that's another question is it time to turn our attention back to the imf and will the e-levy solve the problem these are some of the questions we are raising this is the point of view stay with us welcome back to the point of view tonight we're trying to put a barometer on ghana's economy where are we fitch has downgraded ghana's credit rating the lowest we've had since 2001 it's B minus negative. The World Bank is urging developing countries, including Ghana, to be cautious of their borrowing, saying that we may soon not be able to access external financing. Bloomberg is also saying that Ghana is in a bit of trouble, or a lot of trouble. The finance ministry doesn't seem to agree with all of these. So I have Toma and me here in studio, and I also have Joe Jackson. Toma, how did we get here, by the way? Because I thought things were looking pretty nice a few years earlier. Politics. Simple. Politics? Yeah, politics. Now, see, a government comes to power, mm. has made so many promises to the electorate about um, this social intervention, that infrastructure, and this and that and that and that and that. Mm. Now, already because of the indebtedness it is in, a large part of its revenues already are going on servicing debt. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't have enough money left to fulfill those promises. Mm. 
So what does he do? He goes to the Yoruba market mm. and borrows money to fulfill those promises. Now, don't forget, the Yoruba market is not like in those days when we're taking concessional finance where the IMF and the World Bank would have to convince them about what we're going to use the money for, mm -hmm. that the money is going to be used properly. All right? Mm -hmm. All the Yoruba investors are concerned about is we get our money back at the agreed rate. Mm. Once they feel they will, they will get their money back, they will give it to us. All right? So now, we now borrow that money mm. to meet those... To, 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 do, to do those, to meet those promises. Mm -hmm. The thing is this. When the government itself is borrowing that money, government knows it's putting itself into a bigger mess. Mm -hmm. But here's the problem. If it doesn't do it, the opposition will say that the government has failed to meet its promises, the government is being insensitive, and blah, 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 blah. So the incumbent government is now forced to borrow this to borrow extra money. And unfortunately or unfortunately, because of the nature of the Eurobond market, you can borrow long term. Don't forget that the longest any government can be in power is eight years. Mm -hmm. So if I now go, all I have to do is now go and borrow 20 years. Mm. All right? <laughs> Fulfill my promises. After eight years, I walk away. It becomes somebody else's problem. Simple example. The very first time I went to the Yoruba market, it was the Kufour administration that went mm. there. Who did the repayment face? The Mahama administration. Mm. Right now, the, the Eurobonds, the 10 year Eurobond issuances that the Mahama government took is facing the Akufuadu administration. <laughs> the Akufuadu administration is even boring longer term. Mm. True, kind of forever. Some of them are going as far as 20, 30 years, which means that some about four administrations from now mm. will now face problems. The, the, the finance minister then is probably in secondary school. Exactly. He's probably in university. Now, let, that he's going to be let me give you the worst kind of example of this thing. We keep, we boast about the fact that last year we did the very, very first zero coupon bonds mm -hmm. in sub Saharan Africa. And we talk about how much we've saved. Mm. But look at the timing of those bonds. Mm. Those bonds will mature in March 2025. Mm. Those bonds are going to mature 60 days after the government that takes over from this current government that borrowed the money and is using it leaves power. 60 days later, whoever has taken over has to now pay off. So whoever is in the 2024 election... They've already taken money for you to pay. Oh, yeah. You know, so wow. that, that is where, that is how the problem keeps coming. As Joe has said before, you just keep kicking the can further down the road. You know, you borrow money to please the electorate, and the repayment is somebody else's problem. If you don't borrow that money to please the electorate, the opposition is going to convince the electorate that you are a wicked government, you're an incompetent government. That's why you were not able to do the okay. things you claimed you wanted to so, do. So, Joe, let's come back to you. So, the international market is not favorable. Does that mean you are broke? The fact that you can't borrow, go for euro bonds or other types of bonds, does that make you broke? No. So, so well, are we broke? <laughs> Unfortunately, yes. You see, <laughs> being broke mm. has... The, the, one of the reasons why we cannot seem to borrow more is that we are broke. And being broke is very simple. If you are paid 100 CDs mm. and you pay five, uh, uh, 50 CDs for your domestics uh, for, to pay interest on the debt you owe, mm -hmm. and you pay 55 CDs for your domestic staff, mm -hmm. how much is left? You are in the negative, negative already. Five. five. You see... If you look at, you break down our numbers. Mm. Last year, we needed about 38 billion cities, cities to finance our expenditure. Mm -hmm. This year, mm. expenditure is supposed to go up, and revenue is supposed to go up to what? A hundred and something billion. Yeah. 
guess how much we still need? 37 billion. Nothing has changed. Mm. All the revenue we are raking in, we are going to spend and more. Being broke is very simple. It is how much you earn versus how much you spend. Look at the issues on there. You see that, listen, the deficit is still what? 36%. Mm. 37 billion that we have to find. But it's 2 billion from January to September. Mm. When, mean, when you say you are broke, it's because you are spending more than you make. make. It, it's a, it has nothing to do with it. So let's, let's be clear. And it is this spending more than you make and not showing the international market that I'm making strenuous efforts to bring it in. That is why we are broke. And that is why the government will tell you, I need that e-levy to work. But the e-levy, how much do you even get from it? E-levy, at best, 7 billion, billion. cities. Oh. And but, don't but, but if you look at all other countries, 7 nobody has made me. anywhere near that sum of money. Yes, because the whole of MTN, how much do they even make? And don't forget... Well, it's not just MTN. I know, but... Remember yeah. that they also want to do all transfers above 100,000 mm -hmm. CDs. All bank e-transfers. So, electronic optim fund optimistically, how much would they raise from that if it goes to... I'll be honest with you. Because of the backlash, mm. and because people will find ways to avoid the e-levy... We don't even know how much they will no. get from and, it. And if they get 50% of the of target, it. I'll be impressed. So if they get 3.5 billion CDs, you'll be impressed. Mm. You were making a point. And to the fact that... Because, because first of all, they're not going to get the 1.75. Mm -hmm. Right? It's going to come a little lower than that. Yeah. They've already negotiated with the... Uh, and anybody mm -hmm. who's tried this thing has always dropped anyway. So somewhere, there's going to be a negotiation and it will I drop. drop yeah. Charlie, if it you get 3.5 million, it will be a good, good, good... But I wanted effort. to go back to the charts you were showing, the second one. Yes. So what is... First, you've shown the revenue, the expenditure, and the deficit, right? And you've shown me that deficit is about 36%. Now, you've also shown me the interest payments and the salaries. Yes. And how dire this situation is. But what does this mean? What you can, I, can, I, okay. can, can I just quickly come in on one thing? I just want to remind you of something we've, we've actually said on this program before. Mm -hmm. Banks, when a bank gives salary loan mm -hmm. to workers, mm -hmm. they don't give loans whereby the, 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 the servicing is amounts to more than 40% of the borrower's salary. The reason why is that banks have learned from experience that once the borrower is paying more than 40% the of your salary, is too high. the risk of default is too high. You change can't number run away. Exactly. Right now, Ghana is doing what? For, 20, for 2020, it will, we did 49.5%. Yes. Of our revenue. Yes, of our tax revenue. 49.5% on debt servicing. Not 40% to 495 which means that if Ghana was a salary earner, half of his salary mm -hmm. is going into debt. That's the point. Means that banks will not even lend us money no, anymore. Forget banks. banks will not even lend us money anymore. They'll lend to the government. They'll say we have borrowed. They will default. Mm. No, but let's go back to the graph. Yes, yeah, show me the second graph. I just wanted to explain. Yeah. Okay. Now this graph just tells us how difficult the situation is. Mm. In that, look at it all. Our total interest and salaries was mm -hmm. over a hundred percent at one point in september we're still waiting for the december figures the only thing we can tell you is that the income went up to 57.32 which i say hooray well done jerry that's the best news you've given the government in a long time and 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 they have to be commended but at the same time, look at these numbers clearly. We are expecting a jump from 57.3 to 100.5. Can't happen. That's where the trouble is. And we still want to spend, remember, that even without the warning, we are expecting to spend 37.5 billion CDs in interest payments. And another 35.8 billion in salaries. salaries. So when you add those two, you're already over 70 billion. And that is where the problem is. Let's look at the debt situation. You have a chart on the debts. 
from 2019 to 2022, mm -hmm. in terms of this is cities, right? Yes, this is cities. Our public debt is $218 million to mm -hmm. 291 348 368 the ratio is also going up it's getting closer to 80. Uh -huh. now you notice that we've estimated but now we are finding out that even that estimate may be too low mm. why have you put grenades at the bottom of your chart it's not a grenade what is it it is a ball and chain that is dragging the economy down it's a ball and chain what do they yeah. put on the sleeve so that they can't run away that's what you put under there. That's it. It's a ball and chain. It's not a grenade. It is dragging the economy down. It is making our life difficult. Now, let me tell you how this means in real terms. You see, when Toma talks about politics, mm. the problem is this. We have a problem. Let's all face it. But you know what? If today, maybe, just maybe, if the MPP government were to admit to it, the NDC will take them to the cleaners. But it's a real problem yeah. we all have. Maybe if we're real about it, we will be able to tell labor that I beg you, this is your salary increment. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Maybe this road that, to your house, uh, Bernard, where's your village? Georgia. Georgia. Maybe the road to Georgia is not too bad. I've been down that road. It's a good road, actually. Yeah, yeah. it's quite a but good if road. The MPP, if the government did that right now, NDC will come out and say that, hey, uh, you, you don't MPP do anything. They are very wicked. They don't want to help, they don't want to help workers. Okay. The government says the balance mm -hmm. can be financed through the use of alternate instruments, including term loans, bilateral and multilateral loan facilities, and a tap in of our domestic dollar bonds, among others. Mm -hmm. They're basically saying if the international commercial market doesn't look good, that's not the end of the world. We can still get money. Oh, it's true. What are multilateral and bilateral loans? Isn't that the IMF leading the brigade? Mm -hmm. they, they mentioned term loans, bilateral and multilateral loan facilities. Yes. So wow. that's, that, that includes IMF. That includes IMF. And IMF yes. is the one that will, those are concessional loans that they give you yes. when life is hard. Yes. Essentially, the door has been slightly opened, as we speak now, to a return mm -hmm. to the yes. IMF. But please remember that when you talk about bilateral loans, remember there was this issue when we, when we, when we were talking about whether we we'll go hippie or not. Mm -hmm. A lot of countries, mm -hmm. rich countries, wrote off the bilateral loans they had given to us mm -hmm. back in the 80s and the 90s under HIPIC, mm -hmm. all right? And one of the arguments against taking HIPIC was that if we go through HIPIC, you can't go back to those countries again for loans because I've already written off. And that situation is facing us. Bear in mind, right? As for debt write-offs, you have a problem. When there's such a significant chunk of your debt is from the euro bond market, where are the write-offs? Those guys are mercenary. Of course, commercial, I mean, commercial are going to write off. They're, They're not going to write, write off anything. Why should they write off? Yes. In any case, they are taking a hit because <laughs> of your, uh, yes. your, 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 the spread is growing. It's uh -huh. No, they're not going to write off anything. The governments themselves are not going to lend you. Already they have lent you before and they've had to write Thank off you. the loans. They, they so, have to write the so loans off. Essentially, what, we are, what the ministry is saying, if you read between the lines, is that let's open the door towards... Uh, uh, what do you call it, to the IMF. Maybe a small window. But I suspect that if, as the situation tightens up, that small window will now become a doorway and maybe we'll just say, come. But what, we'll come back and look at whether going back to IMF is such an embarrassing thing. It seems to be such a, an anathema to say we're going to the IMF. Although we are members of the IMF, and there are certain things we can get from the IMF. So this is just a question of politics. We'll be buried back. I also have your questions and comments. Stay with us. This is still the point of view. We're trying to understand where our economy is. Stay with us. Welcome back to the point of view. Leah, here are some of your comments. When Kenoferati and Dr. Addison are receiving uh, awards as best finance minister and best governor of Africa, respectively, a few years ago, how come the economy suddenly collapsed quickly from La Paz? Good evening, Bernard. Let the leaders and politicians take it or leave it. Ghana is heavily broke, period. This is not rocket science. This is Emmanuel from Tadi. Uh, Obed Ho, 
says, kindly ask your panelists about the role of gold in a country's economy. Is gold money? Then why are we not accumulating gold at the central bank? Ben, please, we are not broke. President Kufado said in his campaign that Ghana is rich. Now that he's in power, in fact, we are very, very rich. As for Ilevi, it's a killer plan. Jaffa from Upper East. <laughs> Bernard, our fundamental problem is that over the years, we have boxed ourselves into a situation of stagnant revenues and politically driven over bloated and misallocated expenditures. What we have to do is to rescale our revenues and curtail expenditures so we can reduce our debt and borrowing. This is Dr. Kwache. Bernard, ask Joe Jackson whether the MPP government should go to the IMF bailout or should they force and implement the e-levy that will make Ghanaians worse of Prince from Koforidia? And then uh, uh, Dr. Kwachi goes on. If we plug the loopholes in our taxes, then we can double our revenue. We do not even need the e-levy. Any quick comments? Somebody wants to know whether we should go to IMF or do e-levy. E are there alternatives? First of all, they are not mutually exclusive. Okay. You see, the e-levy has now become something that is required by this government to show that it is serious about fiscal consolidation. Mm. Yeah. Or in other mm. words, it is serious about making more money than it needs to spend. Mm. Now, remember that in this when you are broke, there are two ways you can do it. Make more money or spend less. Mm. Right? Mm -hmm. Politics make it hard to spend less. Mm. Also, there are some locked-in expenditures that you can't afford to say. You can't afford to say you won't pay salaries. You can't afford to say you won't service your debt. So you've got to pay your debt service. You've got to pay salaries before we start talking about the others. And you've locked in some things. Free SHS, NAPCO, another how many millions for the... Uh, or Batam uh, Park, Park, something, Park something, something. Cares, something, something, Ghana something. Cares, 100 Ghana. billion. Mm -hmm. Yes, but all of it is not from the government. It's only 30 billion that's from the government. Mm -hmm. But whatever it is, you've locked in some certain expenditures because of politics. Mm. One of the things you should be doing is taking away your. Uh, we've, we've taken away the benchmark at the ports. Yeah. That is some serious revenue we have given up. Yeah. So the benchmark thing. They were bullied by Guta, right? Yes. Yeah. They should have but stuck their guns. Definitely. But you see, my issue is this. The, the, the situation can be resolved. But you can't resolve our situation unless we face up to the fact that we have a situation. So, they, they have so we are speaking out of both sides of our mouth. Mm. On one hand, we say well, everything is cool. And on the other hand, Look at the response to Bloomberg. It says that, yes, our debt to GDP is 70. 78 is not good. <laughs> the threshold is 66%. You are at 78. You also say that without the E-Levy, hmm, if the situation was not so dire, the E-Levy at best will bring 7 billion. Why can't we say, okay, they won't do the E-Levy? They won't do the e levy because the situation is serious. And when you take debt service and salaries alone, you've cleaned out the treasury. Mm. So anything else, even before we start borrowing, the e levy has to come. And and, and you see, for me, I, 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 I'm sad. I'm sad not because I think the e levy is good. The e levy is disastrous for. For those of us who are digital and who have built models around mobile money, disbursing by mobile, the energy is crazy. We have, I'm pulling my hair out. But I also know that. So what are the immediate alternatives to take us out of the problem? Problem immediately. immediately. Of course, we can, we, we, it is easy to say, sit here and say, do direct taxes. But direct taxes take some time to build to up. Build, yeah. It is easy for me to sit here and say, oh... Uh, 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 I can't, you can't, you have to pay the salaries. You can't stop paying salaries. Mm. You have to pay your debtors. You can't stop paying your debtors. So really, the only issue is for us to come down as a family, sit down and say, okay, so I can't do any more roads. So those hospitals, chill. Agenda 111 and all those things. Yes, or finance them from outside. But the, you, you, 
you can't. You see, we, we're sitting here, and as a nation, we've buried our heads in the sand. And any time somebody says, wake up or keep, pull your head out of the sand, you say, no, don't wash your dirty linen in public. So, to, and and, and I, I, you I, say that, I see the analysts outside there, the investors outside there, they are stupid. And that we give, they, they don't have enough intelligence to tell that what is happening is wrong. And as a country, we all, we all know that tax exemption, this tax exemption okay. regime, half of it is just family, you know, just like favors to political cronies and friends and stuff like that. And now you now give it to foreign investors mm. so they can increase their profit margins. And when you have the revenue shortfall, you now increase the taxes on your own populace, on your own citizens to, to try to cover up so the exemptions the are another issue. The exemptions have been lying there for so years. So what's your prediction? They will pass the E-Levy. They will push it through. I think they have to because if they don't, things will get much, much, much What much about worse. going to the IMF for a program? I, that's what I think they should do, but it's, it, it's unlikely to happen for political reasons. Why? Because this government... Okay, two things. One is that, and this is purely economic, this government believes in supply-side economics. Gov this government believes that you should increase supply capacity to meet demand rather than reduce... They don't believe in austerity. Yeah, they don't believe in demand management, like reduce demand to meet what is available to you. And um, to be honest, it was on, before COVID came, it, it was working. And I kind of do support that because at least it creates jobs locally rather than abroad. All right. But it, with the current situation, it's no longer working. So we have to start looking at demand management again. That's one reason why we don't go to the IMF because the IMF insists on demand management. Remember, the, the IMF is a Bretton Woods institution. It's a balance of payments institution. The major thing the IMF is there for is to make sure that countries like Ghana can meet its bills. So if, 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 if you're not able to meet your bills, the IMF will make sure that you reduce your demand. So on the, on uh -huh. the economic side, the government's policy doesn't necessarily align with IMF. With the IMF. And on the political yeah. side... Now the on policy? the political side, don't forget that this government claimed that it was the incompetence of his of his predecessors that, that to took the us to the IMF. So even so if, if, we dying, the IMF, them, if we go to the die, IMF, if we go to the IMF, it means that they are also as they are just as incompetent. So close that they won't go. Even if the facts point to the fact that the economy is not being well managed. Exactly. So there's a political reason and there's an economic reason. Wow. And there's also elections coming up, primaries and all of that. So the focus of there the government may also shift. There you go. So your prediction last year that things are going to get tough is still on course. It's still on course. Inflation started inching upwards as well. Inflation has started inching up. If I, Joe has admitted that it's going to be tougher than you even thought. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's tougher than you said last year. Oh yes. Because, <laughs> because, hey, tough yeah. going because to be. remember that borrowing is going to be expensive for the government. Because borrowing locally is expensive. Oh. You borrow a local interest rate, yeah. it's expensive. Also, you know that uh, so they'll crowd you out people like you who are in the private who are they'll crowd the banks out no, they'll raise, that's they'll, what's they'll going crowd to private sector out of yeah. that's what's going to happen now because don't forget now you can't go to your bond market so they'll go domestic this year so, so, people will not get, so and lazy banks will go and buy tea bills that's it of course so, so things are going to be tough my 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 issue is that to those who are listening listen things are tough even if the politicians will admit it, identify it yourself and, and, and get your loans. It's oh, not going to be easy. You sound like Jeremiah the prophet. And, 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 and I, I beg you, temper that your labor demand. So there's no cash. Yeah. And I'm but not, is, it I'm our, not, is it our fault? Hey, but, but if but, labor, the labor has to be paid by government to their buying their own cars and uh, and well, of course, if you I'm them. just saying that there is no higher in, income. On but higher the income, more you insist the on these you. things, the harder it is for all of us. Yeah, but you can't blame labor for that. They are no, working. I'm not blaming the, the them. I'm not pay. blaming them. All no. I'm saying is they that they temper their expectations. Temper your expectations. The only way labor is going to get more money now is if they go and print more money. So of course you get the money is paper money. Inflation they should reduce the salaries of the ministers and the MPs. It was and only, pay the teachers a, and the nurses. That's, listen, that's what it should it start from. It is a from. hole in the bucket. The, what the salaries of the MPs and their cars do is not because it costs us that much in the grand scheme of things. It is because it, it irritates us. You know, as, as I can, 
is edidija eni muna nenam. You understand it? When you eat, edidija eni muna. When you when you are when I'm hungry, and you are eating, and living. you are eating and living good. It it annoys it's me. Edidija eni muna nenam. <laughs> Another thing you have to do, Bernard, going back to where I started from, Our time you is need up. to mm -hmm. quickly get your oil field. Those discoveries that have been made, you need to get those oil fields up and running. All right, we'll come back and talk more. Hopefully, I'll get it for the next quarter. Joe Jackson and Thomas. When is I supposed to do a preview of the economy? But because of all the confusion around where we are, we decided to focus on this. Hope you've learned something new. Thank you for watching. The Business Dashboard is next. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye. The Point of View is brought to you by Cowbell Coffee. Cowbell Coffee. Taste it. Love it. Kel Choco Toothpaste. Kel Choco. Happy Smile. Bell Aqua Active. Bell Aqua Active. Stay true to originality.